Well, hello folks and welcome back to the world of the bald biker and uh, it's a beautiful sunny Sunday or Saturday afternoon and uh, I just wanted to give you an update because I know I have not been posting much lately just been working and busy and doing stuff and uh, and then when I finally do get a day off bad weather I talked about that last video so we're not going to go on about that anyway I'm just putting a little update in uh, letting you know that everything is planned for the new trip coming up and that's going to be a big trip so what you're going to see is a sort of a long month-long drought of no bike videos until I get back and start processing everything because I'm not I can't process them and upload them on the road I'm just not savvy enough for that or have the time or or the skills so I'm gonna film everything while I'm on my 27 day trip it's come down to and then we'll start uploading those when I get back and it'll go on right into the winter I'll put one up every week so hang in there I uh, really appreciate if you stay subscribed uh, because uh, the content is coming Anyway, as for today, I'll just give you an update. So one thing I've done is I have put these stock tires back on. They're not that worn down before I put the Trail Max missions on. And you might wonder, well, why are you putting the stock tires back on? Well, these stock tires are a 90-10 tire uh, Michelins or Bridgestones. <laughs> Sorry, Bridgestones. So with this 90-10 tire, where I'm going out east in three weeks, I mean, it's going to be all pavement. The only time I'll probably be off the pavement is in a construction zone or something like that. So there's not going to be any off-roading. There's not going to be much gravel, hopefully. <laughs> so it was. It made more sense to do this, uh, I don't know how long, it, it could be like a 5,000 kilometer trip. Uh, on road tires that have harder rubber that are made more for the pavement probably will do better in the rain and stuff like that uh, than than the 50-50 uh, tires which are more made for gravel and off-roady stuff then when I get back from the big trip no problem I can put the trail max missions back on and then I can do a lot more gravel back road exploring and stuff so that is why these stock tires are on I think they're going to be a better tire for me as you can see they still got quite a bit of wear I'm expecting by the time I get done from the big trip, if they make it at all, they're going to be pretty much shot by the time I get back. So so that's what we're doing there. So I'm getting ready and we're going to go out for a little day trip and we're going to talk about how I'm planning my trip. Hang in there. So one other thing I forgot to mention is uh, I took the bike in for servicing to get ready for this trip as well um, because I don't have a garage. I'm not a bike mechanic. Uh, I'm trying to trust this to the professionals that know what they do best and I do what I do best to make the money to give to them to do it. And it works out better for me that way. Uh, but even when you do that, you know, you still can't rely on the best job. You still have to keep an eye on things and you still have to learn how to keep up things yourself because they don't always do it right. And when I got it back from having the tires changed, uh, I noticed the chain was really, really tight when I went down there. It's supposed to be an inch and five eighths play while on the side stand from about the middle, the center point from here to here, which is here. And as you can see now, it's got that play. Hope you can see, I'm trying to hold my helmet up. And it's, it's set for exactly 40 millimeters on the side stand which is where I want it but when I got it back before like I couldn't even move this so I knew something was wrong and I could also tell something was wrong because of the way the bike handles when the chain is too tight especially on a DCT uh, it doesn't change gears as well and it was it's like jerky when it is shifting through the gears uh, not even uh, taking off and slowing down, just just driving in general. It just felt like, uh, 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 you know, and uh, I, you know, I knew something wasn't right. So once I had that chain slack loosened to the right level, uh, things just felt smoother. Uh, it wasn't downshifting during the turns as much as it was doing when the chain was tight. It does a lot of things that, that are undesirable if the chain's too tight, and. Uh, Plus, you know, you're putting wear and tear on your sprocket and, and, and your chain and everything else. So uh, I went and 
had that fixed. I know it's an easy thing to do. I just didn't want to start messing with that. I didn't have the tools and everything. I didn't want to start messing with that, learning how to do that on the eve of such a long voyage. So I had the local mechanic that I've known for 16 years up the road do it for me. And he did a great job getting that right. And I've checked everything and make sure it's, it's as it should be. So everything should be great now with the chain and the oil changed and all that kind of stuff. So let's head out. Okay, so I'm just getting going underway here. And uh, I'm gonna head out to Markdale, so that's why I don't have a GPS or anything. Well, I have this GPS and the Garmin I hardly ever use anymore, but I still have it just in case. I really need to find my way home or something, I don't know. Um, but I've got it all set up with the beeline and so for the last few weeks I've been spending a, an hour or two every night kind of uh, planning and prepping for the trip. So one of the topics of today, since this is just a driving around talking about stuff kind of video for today, and the topic for today is there's two ways to go on a long trip. You could do the no plan trip where you don't reserve anything you don't even particularly know anything other than the general direction of where you want to go or maybe the ultimate destination like okay I'm driving to St. John's and back and then the rest there's just no plan you stop where you feel like stopping you go where you feel like going you, you, you just check out whatever you find accommodation at the end of each day when you feel like it and, and you just go by the seat of your pants. Now that is absolutely what I wanted to do because I've never really done that. I'm much more of a planner type and uh, I wanted to do it that way but again because I'm a planner type I started doing some research and talking to some people that have done this trip and the advice is absolutely not especially when you're going in July. Um, basically the, the general consensus of everyone that's been out that way that time of year says if you don't have reservations well in advance you will be sleeping under a bridge there will be no campsites there will be no hotels there will be nothing available so I certainly don't want to run into that situation and uh, so after thinking about it it started with the boat. You know, I've got to take the 19 hour ferry all the way to the far end of Newfoundland. And so you obviously have to reserve that and you have to be there at a certain time on a certain day. And if you don't reserve that, even on a motorcycle, you're probably not getting on the boat, especially that time of year. So it started with that. Okay, I have to reserve that. And then I thought, this is a 19 hour trip. Uh, so I decided to splurge a little more and said, I am going to rent a cabin as well on that boat. Because what am I gonna do for 19 hours? I need to sleep for a good portion of that. And I don't wanna just sit in some lounge chair for 19 hours trying to sleep. I'm not gonna feel good if I do that. So I got a cabin, I got the boat. And that's reserved. So now that means you have to be uh, on that day, you have to be in that town, you have to be ready to get on the ferry on that particular day, which is about a five day trip by the way I go. And then I'm like, well, I'll need to stay somewhere that night. I gotta make sure I have a place to stay that night. And uh, it just went from there, right? And. It eventually ended up being, okay, that's, screw it. I'm just going to book every night for the trip. And then what the trip's going to be now is not so much fly by the seat of your pants and explore at will, but the days, each day's adventure is going to be getting to the next hotel, getting to the next motel. And then whatever I find and want to explore along the way, that could be my my freestyle right there. So 
I've ended up meticulously planning again, but at least I will, I should have a place to stay every night. And as long as all goes well and I don't get delayed or break down or anything like that happens, then it should go well and it should last exactly 27 days till I'm home. I know exactly how far I'm traveling each day. So I decided to opt for the planning the route out again. And uh, it's, I don't want to. I know in other countries, and I've seen motovloggers go everywhere, and uh, they are all talking about, you know, and they all fly by the seat of their pants. They don't reserve ahead very much. They just get to a town, and they look for a place, and they somehow always find it. But they're in other countries where things are maybe a little bit different. But this is Canada. We're just coming out of the COVID season, and uh, we need to... Everybody's out trying to get travel again and everyone's trying to do stuff again and there's no way I'm going to find accommodation out there in uh, such a highly sought after touristic area to go such as Newfoundland and Labrador. So there you go, That that is why. If I go out this way I always got to stop for some eggs, see if they got any. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. Have you got any eggs? Well, there are some. Okay. Did she raise her rates a little bit? I want seven bucks for the jumbos now. Well, how am I supposed to make change for that? It's better when it's five. Let's see what these are. These are five, I believe. I get two, and we'll give you ten bucks. Ten bucks. Here you go. So there we go. Hopefully they don't get damaged. Depends how many bumps I hit, I guess. It's getting hot today. That's a new sign. 1853, good old town of Bogner. Always happens. So we will not take the dodgy gravel back road today. It's not just moose and deer you gotta watch for. It's friggin' turkeys. They get pretty big around Grey Bruce. Ah, wind therapy. Out in the back roads of Grey Bruce. Another rider, another loon rider up ahead. He's going the other way though. I wanted to track back this way. So this is Hamill Road and it it's one of the few windy kind of roads. It's not that windy but it's, it's a real nice little road. Lots of nice curves in it. And it kind of heads toward Markdale. Alright, we're coming into just outside of Markdale here. Anyway, I'm good on gas. Only problem with this spot, there's nowhere in the shade. Can't really park there, so I usually park here. There's no shady place to park.
best Jamaica beef patties ever. And I've been to Jamaica many times. Again, this, the other thing about this place is really no place to sit and eat. So you kind of make your own place outside. But with all this COVID, we're kind of used to this, aren't we? And it's time to move on. Got a hot patty and a cold drink on a Britson hot day. It's almost to that point where you can't wear the jacket, but I've got it with me now. I'm gonna stick it out. Just gonna get moving. stuff a kind of free stuff what's free old gas can old fire pot uh, <laughs> you get a construction helmet fish bowl free stuff nothing there I want but hey some people like it just because it's free there's a place here a lot of people stop and I'm gonna check it out I often see bikes parked here. So let's just find out. Where am I going to park? Ooh. Here, I guess. Just inside of it. Let the bikes park to front. Well, the temperature has got to the point where we throw caution to the wind and we throw the jacket on the back, excuse me. But I'm just riding locally and I'm not riding fast. There's no big highways. Take your time, be careful, and you hope for the best. Anyway, that was a very refreshing iced tea here at the Justin's Oven in Kimberley. Nice little patio. Everything's kind of fresh and organic. They have wraps and things to eat too if you want. It's a nice little place to stop, have a bite, take a break. I've had a couple of breaks now, but I really wanted to stop for a nice fresh drink. And that was nice. Some homemade iced tea. Oh, that just feels so much better with no coat. When it's like 30 plus degrees, Oh, I know. It's all well and good till you hit the pavement, but if you don't hit the pavement, it's great. So you just ride extra careful, ride extra safe. So as I cruise up Beaver Valley on a hot summer day, all I can do is tell you that no, there won't be any uploads for a few weeks, probably about three or four weeks, maybe longer because I'm going to be out there doing the big 27 day trip. So yeah, it's going to be more than three weeks. Probably about a month till you see another upload. But hang in there, uh, it'll be a pretty cool trip. And thanks for coming along today's ride. As you can see, everybody's getting out. And uh, hope you all have a super spectacular, fantastic, awesome day. And remember, if you can't have a super 
fantastic, spectacular, awesome day. Just try having a half a super spectacular, spectacular, awesome day. And if you can't have a half of one, try having a quarter of one. But just get whatever you can out of it, okay? Because that's what you need. And I'm gonna just head up the valley, and I'm gonna take the uh, usual routes back on home and get ready for my big trip. Until then, Bald Biker signing out. You have a great one. This is Rich from Great Bruce, Beaver Valley.